So as we all know, Formula One is the pinnacle of technology in motorsport. As I'm sure you've all seen on the TV and in magazines, there are lots of pictures of Formula One cars. But wouldn't it be really cool if we took a Formula One car and split it and opened it, just like an apple? Here at the Sauber F1 team, that's exactly what we've done. We've put a car straight down the centre line. It's taken us two years, but here it is. One of the challenging points of designing a Formula One car are positioning and packaging all the components that make the Formula One car work. Here you can see all these components and how they're positioned on the car. So starting at the rear, we've got the gearbox, we've got the clutch, we've got the engine, we've got the oil tank, we've got the fuel system. Here we've got all the electronic boxes. And then moving up to the front, we've got all the pedals and the steering system. Now, it's very important on a Formula One car that we keep all the weight very low. This reduces the center of gravity of the car and brings us performance. So this is the car steering system. We start with the steering wheel. Clearly, it's not just a steering wheel. It also doubles up as the driver's interface to the rest of the car and also to the pits. On the back of the steering wheel, we have the gear shift paddles and also the paddle to lift the clutch. On the front, there are many buttons to talk to the guys in the pit lane, to change engine settings, to save fuel, more power. And in the middle, uh, there's a little computer screen uh, which tells him if there's any problems with the car. It's split times, all sorts of really useful data for him. From the steering wheel, we come down the steering column, the thin wall carbon tube, which has quite a tortuous route as it comes down through the car. It has to come through the pedals, turn an angle, and then come down to the steering system. The steering system is actually a, a very simple steering system uh, due to the regulations and very similar uh, to that that you have on the road car. Obviously a lot smaller um, and lighter. Here we have the driver's seat, um, obviously where the driver sits. And then immediately behind him, probably 50 millimetres away, is where we store the highly flammable fuel in the fuel cell. Um, this is a Kevlar fuel system and as you can see we have lots of um, horizontal baffles in there. Now if we didn't have these horizontal baffles, uh, the fuel would surge around, particularly under braking with the high, high G levels and in cornering. In each of the baffles, there are little flat valves, which allow the fuel to go down but not up. So as the fuel, fuel drains, the fuel could never come above one of these horizontal baffles. By doing this, we keep the centre of gravity as always as low as possible. There are also lots of pipes and pumps in here. These are positioned uh, strategically to, to feed the engine, whilst also allowing the fuel cell to breathe. We've spoken about all the technical components on the car and how we position them and package them. Uh, I guess the final piece of the jigsaw now is uh, to position the driver. Uh, some say he's the most important part of the car, so, uh, so let's get him in. It's important to be fit. You are not in a normal position. You have a lot of forces, especially in a crash. I had a big accident last year in, in Monaco, so we, we quite know that it's a safe car. Should we get you in then? Of course. You sitting comfy? Well, <laughs> a little bit. This is how it looks. As I told you, not a very comfortable position to be sitting in uh, two hours. We've spoken about getting all the components as, as low down on the car as, as, um, as possible. Obviously, you're, you're just another component uh, to us. So, as you can see, um, your sort of backside is 10 millimetres away from the tarmac, from the which, floor. which obviously, you know, you feel when you're um, when you're racing in the car. Yeah. It's usually a good gauge to, 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 to tell us if the car is too low because his, uh, his backside maybe gets a little bit warm. <laughs> you just feel the uh, small touch yeah. back there. Yeah. Safety is obviously paramount in Formula One. Obviously, if anything does happen, uh, we have a fire extinguisher system on the car, which sits here, uh, which can either be activated by the driver uh, or the marshals at the track. The actual chassis is one big safe haven for the driver. We make the chassis from carbon and honeycomb, so it's very, very strong and very light. There are many other uh, safety features on the car, uh, such as the head padding to stop the driver's head getting injured. We have crash structures um, above the driver's head um, and in front of the driver. And then as we move down the car, we have a crash zone at the front. All this packaging that we've spoken about makes it very difficult to try and find anywhere for my apple. Uh, to fit, other than this huge void at the front which has to be reserved for the frontal, frontal crash test. Um, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed your tour of a, of a uh, cutaway Sauber F1 car. Um, thank you very much.